Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash pro revenge, so sit back relax and enjoy some reddit stories. Dance director invokes pro revenge on himself. Here's another little tale from my days of working in theatre. This takes place in the mid 80s. So there I am, sat at home with my feet up, watching a bit of telly with her indoors, and nursing a rather fine single malt, when the phone goes off. It was Jake, a dance director I'd worked with some years previously. Now, Jake was not exactly the nicest individual. He was arrogant, possessed an ego the size of a small planet, and was generally a right royal pain in the fundament to work with. Still, I was curious to know why he had called me up after so many years. He informed me in breathless tones that he was putting together a new dance company, utilizing the best and brightest dancers and choreographers, and was soliciting my skills to handle the sound design. He had also booked a major West End theater for an afternoon to host the showcase performance, where had been invited a whole slew of potential money backers and members of the press. In short, this was supposed to be a prestigious event to not only highlight a dancing troupe with some serious chops, but also highlight some of the very best choreographers currently working. The ultimate plan was to take an expanded version show on a UK and European tour, for which my services would also be required. One choreographer in particular, Alex, was at the time enjoying a huge success with a big West End show, both as a choreographer and director, which had also garnered a number of major awards. Alex was also a personal friend of mine. We regularly drank in the same pub of a lunchtime and evening. He was the sweetest guy imaginable. Despite his fame, he was utterly without pretension and was a popular member of our little group of creatives who also drank there. What Jake was asking me to do was comparatively simple. Edit together the music tracks that were going to be used in the showcase, together with a few sound effects. This was at best a day of work, and I would cop for a couple of hundred quid for my trouble. In other words, a nice little earner for very little effort. There was also the pleasure of working professionally with Alex, as well as potentially more work down the line, so despite my initial misgivings at having to work with Jake again, I agreed. A few days later, I coordinated with the six choreographers involved, got their requirements and went to work. One particular SFX required some eerie synth generated noises, so I got my friend Bill to create that for me. As he had all the kit to hand and he was a bit of a whiz in that regard, I assembled the showmaster tape, laid off rehearsal cassettes for the six choreographers and waited for show day. Come the day of the showcase, I turn up at the theatre together with my friend Bill at about 1pm. The show was scheduled to start at 2pm. I checked with the sound operator and made sure he was happy before going backstage. We found a slight air of panic with Jake. According to him, only a small handful of the 200 plus people invited had RSVP'd. I made the observation that this was not necessarily a bad sign and reminded him of the time that we'd done a showcase in Belfast some years previously, under similar circumstances and still got them turning up. Bill and I then slipped off to the pub next door for a swift one and then shortly before showtime went back into the theatre where we elected to sit in the dress circle, the better to observe the proceedings. Expecting to see at least 150 people sat in the stalls, we were shocked to see less than a dozen. Uh oh. The first act then opens to a virtually empty house. Clearly something has gone terribly wrong. Act 1 finishes and we trot off backstage to be confronted by Jake having a full on nuclear meltdown. It was then, in the middle of his tirade, we discovered that he'd taken out a second mortgage on his house, around £25,000, to fund the whole shebang. 
almost none of the invitees had turned up, and he was now facing the prospect of losing his home. Bill and I discreetly withdrew to the theater bar for some medication before returning for act two. At the end of the show, we go backstage to offer our commiserations, informed the cast that we were going to our local and that people were welcome to join us. Jake was still in full rant mode. We repaired to our local where over the next half hour or so, various members of the entourage trickle in, all with further intelligence regarding the fiasco. One thing we did learn was that Jake had apparently neglected to send the invites out to the potential backers until a few days previously. Frankly, insufficient time for the major financial players he was targeting to schedule it into their busy diaries. There was also supposed to be an after show party that evening at one of the big local restaurants. We debated whether it was going to be politic to turn up, but decided that we should go, even if it was only to express our sympathies. Also, free food. A um, big mistake. After drowning our collective sorrows in the pub, we eventually went en masse to the restaurant. There we found Jake looking like he was about to suffer a massive coronary. The atmosphere was shall we say icy to say the least, as we ordered our food. Our meals arrive and as we start to chow down, Jake launches into another expletive laden diatribe against the entire assembled cast, dialing up the rhetoric to 11. In particular, he reserved particular viatrol for Alex, citing that due to his success with his current show, he should have done more help to pull the backers in. This was absolutely not Alex's responsibility. It was entirely Jake's, but he was seeking to deflect his own inadequacies onto others. We sat there appalled as Jake continued to castigate Alex while getting in a few punches at the rest of us, and all the while declaring that we had to pay for our food, despite the assurance that Jake was picking up the tab as previously promised. Visibly upset, Alex stood, told Jake to go screw himself, and stormed out of the restaurant. Jake now turned his attention to critiquing the rest of us as incompetent fools, and expressing his opinion of Alex's talent, claiming that he was a third-rate choreographer, despite Alex winning awards for Best Musical and Best Director a few months previously. Enough. Now seeing a deeper shade of red that I have ever experienced, I stood and gave Jake an epic full on 16 inch broadside, expressing my utter outrage at that way that Alex and the rest of us had been treated, and using enough swear words to make the average naval rating blush violently. I then declared that I was leaving and that any like minded people could join me in our local. Brushing aside the matred who had come up and insisted Bill and I pay for our meals, I pointed him in the direction of Jake and declaimed in no uncertain terms that as he has invited us, he will be picking up the tab. A few minutes later, we were back in the pub where we found Alex wrapping himself around a large vodka and was visibly shaking at the encounter. I felt obliged to hug my friend, whereupon he burst into tears, something that I'd never seen Alex do before. As I'm consoling Alex, the rest of the cast turn up and report on the absolute meltdown that ensued after we left. Apparently, it was so spectacular, it involved the local constabulary. Can't say I was surprised. In need of further decompression, we decided to go off to a late night drinking club where we all got well tanked. It transpired later that Jake was indeed totally screwed financially over the situation, due to his own utter incompetence. Arguably, the first case of someone unwittingly enacting pro-revenge on themselves. I've got to say, when they first revealed that he'd taken out a second mortgage, I was like, oh, I feel really bad for this guy. And then he revealed really how much of a douche he was and blaming everyone else. It's like, okay, maybe he deserved it. That was a really good read, though. Ex-boss assaulted me and invokes the wrath of my friend. 
I spent two years working for a particular boss, who I'll call Dr. Dan, who was, and almost certainly still is, the most unacceptable human being I have ever had the displeasure of encountering. He was a compulsive liar, a narcissist, short-tempered, unethical, unreasonable, unintelligent, and abusive. I once witnessed him spend half an hour shouting at a salesman for wearing shoes that Dan didn't approve of. Not inappropriate shoes, mind you, but just ones that Dan didn't like. The salesman in question could have gone home and changed his shoes in the time that Dan spent cursing him out and belittling him. He also sold a client secondhand computers, claiming they were new and priced as new ones. This man not only assaulted me, but verbally and emotionally abused me for the better part of two years, and did everything in his power to keep me under his thumb. He constantly micromanaged me, to the point of just dictating to me what I should write in an email to a client. If it wasn't done exactly his way, it wasn't correct. I had to argue with him to just get a goddamn sick day, even though I'm legally entitled to it. I was woefully underpaid and on call 24-7. This made it difficult for me to find other employment, and is one of the reasons I stayed as long as I did. He made my life absolutely miserable, and I developed a bit of a drinking problem as a result. I recently watched a presentation on domestic violence, and his behavior is a textbook case of what they do. I could go on and on about the things that this man did to be the biggest jerk he could be, but this is pro-revenge, not bad bosses. So I'll get to the story. One day, Dan and I had a disagreement about something. I was right and had the emails to prove it, and I was frankly fed up with his BS. I told him I wouldn't be going into work because I was taking a sick day. He proceeded to shove me to the ground. He's a big guy, probably one of the reasons he's gotten away with being the human garbage he is for so long, and starts trying to strangle me. I was able to fend him off and escape, and after I did, I filed a police report. There were no witnesses, so that was going nowhere. He actually had one of his other subordinates make a claim that the alleged assault didn't happen. Said subordinate wasn't there at the time, so false report. I naturally told everyone I knew, and all his clients that contacted me afterward. I was their primary IT support, so quite a few of them had my personal number. That I had filed a police report against him for assault. I specifically said it that way because unlike simply claiming that he assaulted me, telling people I filed a report was unarguably true and not slanderous. A lot of his clients were already not happy with the services he provided, internet and PBX, so that certainly turned a lot of them off of renewing their contracts. A very close family friend of mine, Carol, was naturally one of the first to hear about the assault. I left the country about a month later in search of better opportunities, but my friend remained and became the chairman of the board of trustees for the body corporate of the neighborhood where Dan lived. A body corporate is basically like HOA, but with different laws governing them. She set her sights on making his life hell. Dan had a broken down car that had been broken down for over a year at that point. He never had the money to fix it because he's an awful businessman who never seemed to realize that his business model had really tiny profit margins. And the rules of the neighborhood were changed to force broken down cars to be towed away. If the owner didn't tow it, the body corporate would and charge the owner. Oh, and find them. So Dan was fined a few times, not small amounts either. And when he was fined, he did what he always does when things don't go his way. Throw a tantrum while having no leg to stand on. The tantrum in this case was several expletive-filled emails to the body corporate. Which is such a great way to endear yourself to someone who already hates you. Which got him fined again for breaking the conduct code. This, combined with the loss of revenue for his business, has led him to not having any substantial income for over half a year now. 
He has no car, nor the money to buy one, several of his big clients are definitely not going to renew contracts with him, and he appears to no longer have any staff in his employ. Nobody's seen anyone coming to his house in months now, and the body corporate is pressuring his landlord to evict him. He is well and truly screwed. I'm living happily in another country now, and got an awesome job that pays 20 times what working for him did. Yes, really, 20 times more money. That's how little I made under him. Wow, someone like that definitely deserves that. I'm really glad that the person moved country and, and they're living life now. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.